Hello and welcome back to the CES International News stage here at CES 2015. Uh, I'm Will Finlater from Stuff and I'm joined by Michael A. Bell, um, the General Manager of New Devices Group for Intel and Vice President. Um, thank you so much for joining me because Anytime. I know you're, <laughs> you're a busy man. Um, very much appreciated it. Um, Intel had some really fascinating announcements at the show yesterday. If you could just sort of uh, cover those off, that would be, that would be great. Sure, so um, from the wearable, wearable perspective, which is what I'm involved in mostly, uh, we had a chance to show our first chip design specifically for wearables. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's designing a chip that's meant to be a wearable chip is very different than taking a low-end cell phone part and making it a wearable chip. So designed for, from the ground up to be great for wearables. And then we also announced our Curie module, which is really designed to let people get a wearable device to market very quickly by providing a very stable hardware platform with lots of great software features. So that was just phenomenal. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, we announced our partnership with Oakley. Uh, we announced about two months ago a partnership with Luxottica. And yep. Oakley is one of their partner companies. And we announced that you'll be seeing a product from Oakley with our technology in, this year. Fascinating. So, um, so are we safe to assume that might be some uh, some glasses then? I, I, think, I, <laughs> I think we've said it will be sports related. I'm not sure we've said much else, but stay okay. tuned. <laughs> Fantastic. So, um, so going into a little bit more detail about Curie, what um, what sort of functionality is built into uh, into this this tiny chip? And I know you've brought it with you. Yeah. As well. So, I mean, the the whole idea is that it's it's small enough that you can really produce almost any sort of wearable with it. The the processor itself uh, that we put on there is really designed to be a wearable friendly processor, so it has a low power sensor hub. It has uh, some IP that accelerates pattern matching, so it can very easily in a low power way figure out what you're doing, you know, running, jogging, swimming, fishing, whatever. Um, and it has, uh, on the Curie module itself, it has Bluetooth LE, it has an accelerometer, and it has all the circuitry you need to manage power. So it really is a complete platform. It's, you know, bring a battery and you're, you're cool secret sauce on top of that, and you have a wearable device. Interesting. So uh, is, that, is this a, sort of an evolution of the Edison platform? Appreciate it's a different thing. but Exactly. Yeah. It's, it's very much in, in, uh, in, the, in, the, in the flavor of Edison in that mm -hmm. Edison was designed so makers could quickly get their great idea up and running in a form factor way, very similar to this. You know, if you're building a wearable, a lot of people sort of breadboard them with an Arduino board, a little hard to wear those, right? Yeah. So the idea here is that you can produce a prototype of, your, of a form factor wearable, and maybe even go to production with it, because the hardware is that good. You know, we'll, we'll be selling this after all the proper certifications and things a little bit later this year, and I'm really psyched to see what people do with it. Yeah, you, have you got any, any ideas of what sort of thing, obviously you, you put it in a button there. Yeah, I mean the um, thing is small enough, you could literally imagine this is your fitness tracker, you know, and, and I don't just mean a simple pedometer, but I mean a fitness tracker that does many of the things like our basis band does, mm -hmm. but in a, a, a way that if you wear a normal watch and you're not a, a watch, a fitness watch kind of person, you still get most of that benefit. Right. So we think, um, much like with Edison, where people did incredible things we never thought of, I really can't wait to see what people do with this. Yeah, yeah it's going to be fascinating. Um, Talking of Basis, yes. uh, so Intel acquired Basis. Was that was that in 2014? That we did. It was, uh, I believe, it closed in February or March of last year. Okay. Time's gone so fast. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and, what, and what, what is it about the Basis, uh, the, the, the Basis watch, the, the original one that made you think we need these guys? This is a, an amazing platform. You know, the, the Basis folks, um, they're really experts in in the whole field of quantifying. Uh, uh, fitness and understanding what you do activity-wise. Um, we looked at everything on the market, and Basis was the only one I could find that was really had a root in science and wasn't really just sort of, of a glorified pedometer. Mm -hmm. There was actual, you know, something behind what they're doing. Their sleep tracking is, is very complicated, and they've done some, the, the, before uh, we even bought the company, they had done some studies to show that it really did correlate well to a professional sleep, you know, monitoring rig. Yep. So. They have expertise in this space, and the first generation was, was very good. The second generation is, is even better. It's waterproof. It is actually designed to give you heart rate while you do vigorous exercise. Right. Um, it's much sleeker. It has a touch screen. It's just a fantastic product. Yeah, and um, that, that's what you're wearing right now. It so, is, yes. So, and one of the things that, you know, when, you, when you have a device that does that much, I know one of the challenges that's facing all wearables is um, you want something small, 
obviously it's going to be wearable, you need a power source. So, um, so have you seen over the last sort of 12 months, have you seen much development in, in, that, in that area to try and enhance that experience? Yeah, there are certainly some good startups in the Bay Area working on, I won't just say batteries, but power delivery in general. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, we're doing our part to really bring down the power consumption of the chip itself. Mm -hmm. And it's not just our fantastic process technology, but it really is, you have to fundamentally architect the chip in such a way that it just uses the minimal amount of power to do what it's doing and then turns off. And it's, it's actually a pretty hard problem. Mm -hmm. So we're attacking it kind of from both sides. We're really looking for companies that are doing next generation power delivery and we're doing our part to really bring that power usage of the chip down. And um, uh, the, one of the other devices that you brought with, with you today is the, uh, the SMS audio head, uh, yes, headphones. Absolutely. Um, so I know that they, they kind of, they, they approach the, the power delivery problem that, uh, that some wearables have in a slightly different way. Yes. So there are other, there are, we've seen some smart headphones launched actually at this, sh at this show so far that, um, that require uh, power sources. They, uh, they, they, uh, they have some interesting functionality built in, but arguably there are other compromises to be made. I mean, how, how, have, uh, how would the SMS audio headphones, have, have you tackled that? Yeah, so the SMS audio headphones are an example of what we call frictionless adoption of technology in that you, there, you don't have to make any compromises. There's nothing new to learn. It really is a very easy onboarding process for people who want to try technology, but they're maybe intimidated by the concept of, you know, Bluetooth pairing and profiles and this and that, we figured out a way um, using some very clever engineering to get power and to send the data over the headphone jack. Right. So literally to make these work, the only thing you do is throw away your old headphones, plug these in and launch RunKeeper and that's it. And we'll be supporting more applications as the year goes on. Um, but the uh, reception has been phenomenal because people really resonate with that. Wow, it's really that easy. Um, I think it's important sometimes to understand um, what devices don't do intentionally is as important as what they actually do. Mm -hmm. And we think this is a great balance of features and accessi accessibility for everyone to use. And do you think that's, uh, that's an issue that some other, uh, some other people who are involved in wearables aren't necessarily approaching in the right way at the moment? Yeah, I mean, one of the things I see is that everyone seems to be creating sort of the Swiss Army knife of wearables. They do everything. They open my garage door. They cook my breakfast. They, you know, give me instantaneous heart rate when I push a button. I mean, I'm not sure what good that is. Yeah. Um, I think what you're going to see is that specially purposed wearables, fitness wearables, um, wearables such as our, our Mika bracelet, um, when they do several things, they do them very well, it's very obvious, it's very fluid, that people will resonate with that. There'll be a place for the Swiss Army Knife devices, mm -hmm. but that's not, I don't think, I don't think that's gonna be what becomes the big seller, you know, for, that makes wearables really explode. Yeah, so the, at the moment that's a bit of a, there's a proliferation of all kinds of different devices, just you know, walk into that room over there and you're confronted with, uh, with um, wearable anything with some technology in it. Um, do you think that's, uh, you think ultimately we might, we might see that condensing into a few specific devices? Are there certain applications that, uh, that, that wearable tech is particularly useful for? Do you think? Well, I, I love the fact that there are so many devices, and I think it will be even better when they all have Curie modules inside them. <laughs> um, but, you know, I think one of the things about wearable technology that's different is there will be many, many different applications. It's not just like the, there's the tablet form factor and the PC form factor. I do think that wearables being a, a very personal thing that you have on your body, yep. there's opportunity for many different kinds of wearables. And in fact, some of them may be very simple, but they solve a problem in such a way that you, know, you go, gosh, I can't believe I ever lived without those. So mm -hmm. I think the experimentation you see here at the show in terms of wearables is very healthy. Mm -hmm. There will be some consolidation, but I think far less than you've seen in traditional tech areas. Interesting. Um, so tell me a little bit about um, uh, Micah, because that, I, I know this year has, uh, has been very much, oh, 2014 anyway, has been uh, a major focus on fashion uh, for, uh, for, for Intel fashion and wearable technology. And one of the upshots of that was the, the Mica bracelet. So yes. can you tell me a little bit about that? Certainly. So our, I'll tell you, our approach with wearables has been uh, many of the companies who today already touched the, the end user are probably the ones that know what customers will want when it comes to wearable technology. So we've formed some great partnerships with the Fossil Group for, for smart watches and other devices. Um, this is a partnership with uh, a, a fantastic 
designer from New York, a fashion house from New York called Opening Ceremony and Barney's New York. The concept is that tech does not have to look geeky, that it can look like high fashion and it can still be something that's really useful because of the technology inside of it. So we worked with them to create something that looks like it comes from their portfolio. In fact, this was launched at Fashion Week New York. It was kind of a surreal experience being at Fashion Week and going to runway shows. Um, but it really is something that people actually like to look so much mm -hmm. that even, even if it didn't have tech inside, I think they would buy it. And then when they realize that when social notifications and things come in, you actually uh, see them on the little screen on the bottom, yeah, yeah. that they're really fascinated. It's a very easy way to explain to somebody how to get into this wearable space without having to explain how to load and pair an application yeah. this. And it, it does a few things really, really well and it looks really good. Yeah. And it's, it's, uh, it's really getting a great reception. But and I think this is one vein of wearables you'll see, which is the looks are very much as important as the functionality. Yeah, well, they're worn, of course. It's uh, you know, fundamentally different to any other, uh, to any other sort of form of technology, consumer tech that we've, uh, we've had so far, I suppose, in that regard. Oh, exactly. I mean, it, it really is, um, you almost could think of this as you're wearing this because you want it to be a representation of how you want people to view you. You know, it's not just about the functionality. It's very different than, you know, many PCs or even tablets that are completely about the functionality. This is about the look as much as anything else. And do you think um, the, the, the wearable tech market generally has realized that? Uh, that, they, uh, that, that there's enough of a focus on that elsewhere. Obviously, for Intel, it's a really big deal, but are you seeing that in other parts of the market too? Well, I think, I think people have realized it recently. Mm -hmm. I think some of the successes we have have really made people wake up. Um, and, and frankly, we're, we are doing our part to help introduce the tech and fashion communities uh, simply because we think it will be good for the ecosystem. Mm -hmm. um, for, for, you know, people are predicting 20 billion or 50 billion, where 50 billion uh, IoT devices by 2020, a fairly large percentage being wearable. Yeah. That's not going to happen unless we produce more things like this and fewer cell phones taped to your wrist. <laughs> yeah, I agree with that, I think. Um, uh, so one of the other uh, the, uh, big things that Intel's pursued in 2014 was uh, the Make It Wearable Challenge. Can you go into a little bit of detail about, about that and you know, what the upshot of that was? Sure, it was, it was phenomenal. So uh, Brian, our, our CEO, had this idea that, hey, let's do a challenge to, to really help jumpstart the, the wearable market. And uh, we solicited proposals from all over the world. There were many, many thousands of proposals submitted. It came down to a group of finalists we had the finals very much in a, uh, if you've seen the American show Shark Tank, it was very much in a Shark Tank format in San Francisco. Some fascinating things came out of it. Mm -hmm. The interesting thing to me is uh, the majority were from Europe, which shouldn't surprise me. Right. Um, and on top of that, there were everything from consumer devices uh, to, to help with infants, mm -hmm. all the way up to uh, industrial gloves to help people manufacture things properly and avoid injury, to my favorite, the flying helicopter camera, or the quadcopter camera that Brian showed in his keynote yesterday. And uh, it's just amazing. You know, we, we've produced, uh, those were all based on Edison. Right. So we basically put out there a platform that we said, hey, we think people can do wild things with it, and then they did. So we'll be doing it again this year, and we've promised it'll be even bigger and better than last year. Fantastic. So, um, so that was the winner. Is that right? The was it Nixie? The um, Nixie so was the winner. So, yes. what does that do? So, it's it's kind of cool. So, it's this um, miniature quadcopter that clamps to your wrist, and when you want to take a picture, you click it. The arms pop out. <laughs> you take it like this. You turn it over. You flick it. It goes out about ten feet. Takes your picture and flies back to you. It's it's wild. I mean, I the first time I saw it, I was like. Oh, this is a, this is a, a you know, it can't possibly be doing that. But then you see the picture, yeah. it's pretty darn cool. Yeah, that sounds like something that just shouldn't work. You know, it's, so it, it's, it's cool. It's, and, and, you know, who would have ever thought, well, I guarantee you when we were designing Edison, we didn't think someone will build a flying <laughs> quadcopter camera with this. I mean, but it's great seeing what, you know, innovative people can do given the right technology platform. Yeah. Um, so have you had a chance to explore the show? Is there anything else that you've seen that you're, you know, particularly excited by here? Well, I do want one of those, you know, 200-inch 4K TVs. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what I would do with it. Um, I am, as you mentioned, I am excited by the, the number of people trying something in the wearable space mm -hmm. because I think, you know, not all of them will succeed, but a good number of them will. 
And uh, you know, I think it's going to really help make this space live up to the hype we see right now. And it's, um, I, I think in the last 12 months, we've seen major developments in wearable technology. What's, what does 12 months' time look like? What are we going to see this time next year, do you think? Wow, it's so hard to predict. <laughs> I, I, you know, I do think, I do think we will see uh, head-mounted technology. I'll say head-mounted as opposed to glasses mm -hmm. uh, that, that does something very interesting. Uh, you know, my belief is that to, if you're going to wear technology, it should make sense why you're putting it where you're putting it. It shouldn't just be there for the heck of it. I think we're going to see some